Good day! This is Teacher Rowan. I'll be your guide in exploring Google Apps for Education, for teaching and learning. In Google for Education, teachers can connect and collaborate easily while staying on task. It gives teachers the freedom to spend more time personalizing the learning experience and less time managing it. Students can learn essential skills such as 21st century problem solving, which they can use it in their future careers. As such, the accessibility features will also help and assist every learner to do their best work. Google offers different useful applications that we can use to connect education to technology. This will help our teachers as a 21st century educators to innovate and find ways on how to make teaching and learning more exciting, engaging, effective, and flexible to the demands of the society. Let's re-explore the education experience by discovering new angles to create collaborate and communicate as one. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Ang pagkatuto, huwag gawin komplikado. Sulong edukalidad. Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. All right. Ayan. So happy Monday sa ating lahat. Good afternoon sa ating mga ka ELS or kung mga Earth and Life Science yan, especially sa ating mga Grade Eleven at mga Grade Twelve learners. Sa ating mga parents, mga teachers na nanonood ngayon. So we are now actually on our week number six. Medyo jump pack den ng ating mga milks for this week, kasi ang target natin ay tatlo. And iikot yan sa geologic time scale at geologic processes and hazards. So muli ito po ang inyong lingkod, Sir Tony or Shooter Tony for Earth Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So mapapanood po tayo ng live sa different Facebook pages ng DepEd EdTech Unit, DepEd Philippines at DepEd Tayo. As well as live din po tayo sa DepEd EdTech Unit at official DepEd TV YouTube channel. Channel. So marami po tayong platform, so walang dahilan para hindi natin maitulay ang ating pagkatuto. Ayan, so we, again, we are using the uh, pivot module provided by Region 4A Calabarzon. So for this session, I will be using the modules number 13, Geolo uh, Geologic Time Scale, Relative and Absolute Dating. Module number 14, the Geologic Timeline. And finally, module number 15, entitled Geologic Processes and Hazards. So I hope you are all safe. Let's start this week right. So dito sa akin nalalagyan ko, malamig, <laughs> maayos ang weather. So kamusta po ba kayo dyan? So I hope uh, we are observing the different health protocols. So ingat-ingat po tayo palagi. So once again, ang requirements is uh, ni Tutor Tony. You have your pen and your paper. Uh, you have your learning modules with you. Of course, kailangan din ng presence ng mind at saka ng presence ng inyong tumitibok na puso. Ayan, presence of mind and presence of your heart. 
And finally, request naman, uh, favor naman, konting lambing ni Tutor Tony, mag-comment po tayo sa ating mga uh, questions later on or mga questions kay mamaya, kay Sir Tony. Uh, uh, sasagutin natin yan. Pagpili natin masagot yan. And uh, pwede rin kayo magpa-shoutout, pabate ng mabilis. Uh, mention the name of your school, your teachers, your classmates. And don't forget to uh, mention then the location, ha, location, para at least ma-acknowledge natin mamaya sa ating mga quick na pabate. All right. Let's have a quick review first ng ating week 5 session. Ayan. So sana ma-share nyo rin yung live stream natin para at least uh, marami ang maabot ng tutorial session na ito. So last week, we discussed the different uh, topics. The first one is about the movements of plates and formation of folds and faults. Ayan, di ba? We have learned that the earth is divided into different uh, continental and oceanic plates. Ayan. And ang highlight ng ating discussion last time is about the different types of plate boundaries at saka yung mga different geologic features na nabubuo sa, sa mga types of boundaries na to, especially sa unang dalawang type ng plate boundary. So if you would recall, the first type is about divergent boundary kung saan ang mga plates ay naglalayo. So they moved uh, apart. The second one is yung nagko-collide, it's which one is called uh, which is called convergent. And then finally, the transform plate boundary. So again, divergent, convergent, and then transform. Tapos, ito, may namiss kasi akong question last week. So hindi ko lang siguro nag, nalagpasan ko yung comment ng batang ito. So saying hi to, ito, si William Takdoro. Ayan, so meron kasi siyang confirm, Sir, ang convergent po ba ay destructive? Akala ko kasi constructive. So nag-comment siya ulit, sir. <laughs> Ayan. So gusto, siyang, gusto niya lang malinawan. So, uh, Nak, William. So ang pag sinabi natin, uh, converge, uh, divergent, sige. Ang ano natin, divergent po na, di ba, naghihiwalay. It, ito yung constructive. Bakit constructive? Kasi na, dahil naghihiwalay yung mga plates, may time para mag-rise yung magma. So as we all know, kapag na yung magma na yan ay nag-rise at natuyo, it can form, uh, it can be an additional part ng uh, plates natin, whether oceanic or continental plates. And at the same time, nabubuo din ang ating ocean floor. Kaya siya, constructive yung divergent. Alright? So, I hope that answered your question. Nak, William Takdoro, kung nanonood ka ba man ngayon? Or baka sa team replay ka na? Ayan. We also discussed the different uh, stratigraphic laws, di ba? Stratigraphy, the science of, or the, the study of the rock layers. Uh, umikot ang ating discussion sa law of superposition, law of cross-cutting relationship, and law of inclusions. Yung tatlong nang yan at in other laws are being used para malaman or ma-date uh, relative dating, in terms of relative dating, yes. Para ma-date ng mga geologists ang mga rocks. Uh, speaking of dating, uh, dating, para malaman ng age, we also uh, compared and contrast what is relative and absolute dating. No, So pag sinabi natin relative dating, more of ano siya, descriptive. So we are just comparing kung sino yung older rock layer or kung sino yung mas younger na rock layer. Unlike kapag absolute. So absolute naman, most, uh, mostly or primarily numeric yung value na ano, kumbaga, uh, because of the measurement of the radiometric dating, Diba? Minimeasure yung half-life para ma-compute yung exact age ng rock. Uh, geologists can uh, identify or uh, tell us the, the exact age of the rock. At dahil sa relative and absolute dating na yan, ayan, i-coconnect natin yan sa ating lesson for today. Kasi may kinalaman yan, syempre, sa ating geologic time scale. So our objectives, session objectives for this afternoon are the following. First, explain how relative and absolute dating were used to determine the subdivisions of geologic time. Pangalawa, describe how the Earth's history can be interpreted from the geologic time scale. So yung unang dalawang objectives na yan, uh, pagsasabahin natin yung discussion mamaya para ma-maximize natin yung 40 minutes, okay? And then we have a separate discussion on the third objective which is uh, describe the various hazards that may happen in the event of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and landslides. Yung mga natural hazards na yan, no? So babalikan natin yan. Alright, so let's have the first target, uh, first two targets pala. So pinagsama na ni Sir Tony. So first is how relative and absolute dating were used ng my geologists para ma-determine nila ang different subdivisions of, or yung mga, pag sinabi natin subdivisions, hindi ito yung mga subdivision ng mga ano, lugar. Ha? Pag sinabi yung subdivisions, yung mga parts ng geologic timeline or geologic timescale. Alright? 
Ayan. So, kung makikita ninyo, if you browse different references, mga science books, encyclopedia, or over the internet, may iba't ibang presentation tayo ng geologic timeline. So, ito para siyang ano, parang spiral na ladder, di ba? Pero commonly, yung pinakita natin sa title, ayan yung common. So, ano yung mga mahalagang uh, nagganap or nangyari for that particular era, period? Ayan. So, discuss natin yan. So, from plants... Nag-evolve. So actually, pinapakita dyan kung paano rin nag-evolve ang buhay or life. Ayan, Paleozoic era, Cenozoic era. Nasang era na ba tayo? So mamaya, manalaman natin. Ayan, so earth history including its rock strata or di ba, discuss natin last week about the rock layers. We are, are engraved in one of the most important materials known as the geologic record. Okay. Parang yung ano, yung kalendaryo natin, 'di ba? So very essential lang kalendaryo kasi it tells us or it reminds us kung ano araw na ba or anong buwan na ba. So whether it's a hard copy or hard material yan ang sinasabit natin sa bahay or yung mga kalendaryo natin, 'di ba, na nasa mga gadgets natin or mga cellphones. So the geologic time scale is the calendar for events in her, uh, Earth's history. So diyan naka-present O, oh, kumbaga, progressive approach yan eh. Hindi lang naman, technically, isang araw ginawa yan ng mga scientists. Kumbaga, it is a product of uh, thousands or hundreds of years ng pag-study ng mga, ng mga geologists natin. So, on the picture on the right, we have here, ayan, so nalagay ko pala yung name. <laughs> Papahulaan ko sana. So, it's called the trilobite. Kung makikita nyo yun sa mga, sa mga films na nagde-depict ng mga ancient times. Ayan, so trilobites or trilobites are one of the first uh, invertebrate na nag-exist sa uh, planeta natin. At maraming mga fossil ang nakita sa, sa different parts ng Earth, ng mga trilobites na yan. Ayan, the, uh, let's define what is the geologic time scale. So it serves as a standard timeline. So kumbaga fixed yan. And just recently, based on my research, mer meron dyan pinaka-updated, provided by the... Uh, organizations of Geologists sa uh, USA. So, meron tayo. Mamaya, papakit na yung link para at least meron kayong mas detailed ng copy. It serves, again, as a standard timeline used to describe the age of rocks. So, hindi lang rocks, fossils na nandun sa rock na yon and the events that form them. So, kumbaga, ito yung Bible. Isa sa mga guide ng mga geologists natin and other sub-disciplines ng geology. On the left, yung sa picture na yan, are you familiar with that? Alam nyo ba na ang inununun natin or mga ancestors, ayan, yung tayong mga mammals, we're classified as mammals, right? So tayo nagmula sa, ayan, sa maliit na rodent na yan. So yung rodent na yan, nagkakaroon ng idea ang mga scientists because of the fossils na nescabate or nahukay at napag-aralan ng mabuti. Okay? Ayan. So another version of the GTS or the geologic time scale is seen or presented on your right. Ayan, sa right screen ng ano natin, right screen ng presentation. So, bakit nga ba mahalagang pag-aralan to? Diba? So, as part of the new generation, we should be appreciative and accept that all things that are present in our time were the outcomes of Earth's history. Kung baga, sabi nga, diba, we learn from the past. Diba? So, hindi naman mag -e exist yung future kung walang past. We'll know more about that later on. Ayan. So, let's proceed with the terms relative and absolute dating. Okay. So, scientists first developed the geologic time scale by studying rock layers and index fossils. So, ayan. Daman-daman ko na ang sikat ng araw sa aking location. <laughs> ayan. So, laban lang. The information gathered by the scientists place the earth rock strata in order by relative age. So, again, ha, class. When we say relative age, compare lang which one is younger or which one is the older rock. Nagamit yan ng mga scientists para matahe, kumbaga, yung mga different uh, parts ng geologic time scale natin. Uh, presented on the right of the screen is what we call or an example of an index fossil. Kung familiar kayo sa ammonite, so ammonite is isa sa mga magagandang fossil. Magaganda yan. Ang ganda kasi ng structure niya. So isa sa mga fossils na kalimitang natatagpuan or natagpuan ng mga geologists sa mga sedimentary rocks that provided clues para malaman natin ang uh, sequencing. Diba? Anong mga nangyari, ilang taon na ba talaga itong mga rocks ito, and so on and so forth. So that was relative uh, dating. But before we uh, discuss or differentiate pa yung dalawa, so we have here... Uh, a portion ng The Story of Fossils found on Module 14, page 9 of the modules. So, sabi dyan, imagine you are hiking in the woods 
as you walk as you walk up a steep hill, you find a fossil. So when we say po fossil, uh, these are the remains ng mga plants, pwedeng plants, pwedeng animals, or other organisms. So it is a mold of many, uh, ang nakita niya, many tiny seashells. So nagtataka siya, so nasa ano siya, no? nasa kagubatan, bakit may shell? So what would seashells be doing in the middle of the woods? Diba? So that particular question uh, prompted yung character natin para pag-aralan ang fossils. And as I have mentioned, diba, pinag-aralan natin, ang mga fossils, they are primarily found sa mga sedimentary rocks. Sila ay natrap, napunta doon sa mga sedimentary rocks. So these rocks form on the surface of the earth and then they record the processes that have happened on the surface, including life. So, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, scientists are able to arrange fossils according to their age. So, this is called the fossil record. And by studying the fossil record, scientists have found that the earth and its life forms have gone through a lot or different changes. Kung baga, yung, yung beauty or yung gandang na, na nakikita na natin sa nature right now ay produkto ng pag, uh, different changes sa surfaces ng planetang Earth. So, ganun ka, ano, ganun ka galing uh, kumilo si God para i-landscape niya yung Earth to be, uh, for us to, ano, to, to appreciate. Okay? And then, last part ng story natin. Ang sabi dyan, fossils have taught us how and when rock layers had formed. They have also helped scientists learn about life forms that have come and gone. Fossils have even taught us about the climate of the earth. Yes, yung mga fossils, they gave, also gave us clue. Kasi may mga fossils na nakita sa Antarctica na actually, yung mga fossils pala na yun or yung mga species ng plants or animals, nabubuhay lang siya sa tropical country or sa mainit na lugar. So, ibig sabihin, that gives us a clue na yung mga, yung Antarctica, yung continent, ng continent ng Antarctica, hindi talaga nasa bandang south ng Earth. So, ganun ka important yung pag-aaral ng mga fossil records natin. Okay? Yan. So, counting shout out muna nga tayo from our, ang unang nag-comment uh, from Batangas Province. Ayan, laging active yung mga Batanggenyo, Batanggenya natin yan. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Si Gail, si Ashley, Christine, good afternoon. All right, shout out po from Patubig Elementary School, Rosel Adam. Hello, good afternoon. I hope you are learning from our session. Balaya National High School, Miss Fe Bautista Arroyo, good afternoon po. Ayan, Maria Enabel Regalado, Christine, Alida Wami, Connie Castillo, good afternoon. Ayan po. Sige, basta tayo may later on ha. Ayan, compare na natin ang relative at saka absolute time. So, relative time is a subdivision of the Earth's, grabe, <laughs> salamat, a subdivision of the Earth's geology in a specific order based upon the relative age. So, comparing the stratigraphic location. Diba? Based sa fossils. Okay? Pag absolute time naman, this refers to the numerical age. Kung baga, pinag-aaralan yung radioactivity, the isotopes, and the half-life ng mga rock samples, yung mga mineral samples na nandun sa, sa rocks. So, they are obtained by radioactive dating methods. So, ganun lang kadali yung konsepto nun. Okay. So, ito na yung ano, kailangan lang natin ano, uh, i-memorize or i-refresh yung mga brain cells natin. I know, uh, na-discuss na to sa, mga, sa junior high school science ninyo. So, geologists have divided Earth's history into a series of time intervals. Kung baga, may, may mga longer periods, tas yung mga longer periods na yun, dinivide pa into shorter periods. So, these time intervals are not equal in length like the hours in a day. So, this is because geologic time is divided using significant events in the history of the Earth. Sa tulong nga ng relative time at saka ng absolute time. So, first is what we call the eon or pag plural, eons. Eons is the largest intervals of geologic time and are hundreds of millions of years in duration. So meron tayong apat na eon. We have the Hadean, Archean, Proterozoic, at saka Panerozoic. So currently, nasa Panerozoic eon na tayo. We'll know more about the first three eon later on. So yung eon is divided into era or eras. Tandaan na. So eon divided into Eras. For example, yung uh, youngest of the eon or yung latest of the eons is divided into three major eons, uh, eras. We have the Cenozoic, Mesozoic, at saka Paleozoic. And if you will notice then sa geologic timescale, may boundaries din tayo. 
Okay? So, eon, pal palit ng palit, no? E from eon divided into era. And then, ang era natin can be divided or further divided into period. Okay? So, eras are subdivided into periods. Let's take, for example, the Paleozoic era. So, it's divided into different periods like Permian, Pennsylvania, yan ang mababasa nyo sa geologic time scale, Mississippian, Devonian, Silurian, or Division, and Cambrian periods. Yung mga names na yan derived from from Latin origin, yung iba naman din derived sa mga sa mga lugar or places. Yan, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, yan. And finally, ang period, lalo na yung recent na period natin, ayan, can be further divided into epochs or epoch. At sana nasusundan niyo yung ano no yung from from general to specific no eon era divided into period and then period can also be divided into epoch or epochs so ayan P a finer subdivisions of time are possible and the periods of the cenozoic era yung pinaka latest are frequently subdivided into epochs Ayan. So, ang ginawa ko kasi dito, class, is in-enlarge ko na lang yung picture kasi ang hirap niya i-present sa PowerPoint na pa-vertical. So, what I did is, in a screenshot, kinarap ko na lang para at least ma-idea kayo. So, kanina, di ba, we have four eons. So, yung pinaka-oldest is the Hydean. So, as you can see, if you will notice, ayan, formation of the Earth. Describes the formation of the Earth. Yung mga numbers na nandyan is yung million years. A million years ago. Archean followed by Proterozoic. And as you can see, ayan, Archean, Earth's crust had cooled enough to allow the formation of continents and life started to form. Anon, uh, Proterozoic, pag sinabi kasi yung Proto, first, yung mga first form ng life forms ay nag-exist na or nag-emerge during that particular part of the geologic time scale. Uh, trivia, uh, when we say Panerozoic Eon, it means visible life. So, visible life dahil nag-flourish na nga ang buhay. So, this is the interval of the GTS characterized by abundant, complex, ayan, and marami kasing ano, kumbaga, merong uh, supporting evidence, kumbaga, kumbaga, uh, nag-ano ka sa case, di ba? May fossils na magsusupport na ganto na talaga yung age ng particular part ng GTS na yan. So, being the youngest eon of time, it is also very well represented by rock at the Earth's surface. Eh, sir, bakit parang ang konti po ng data natin sa unang three na eons? Bakit? Kasi yung mga rocks or yung mga uh, rock formations during that time ay unti-unti nang nag-subside sa, sa center ng Earth or sa mas inner part ng Earth. Kaya clueless ang mga scientists. And if you will notice, hanggang crust pa lang naman yung nararating ng tao. Okay? That's about eon. Next is era and periods. Ayan. So, pag sinabi naman nating Paleozoic, ayan, ibig sabihin nyo na old life, characterized by the trilobites, ayan, shown on the bandang ibaba, part ng screen natin. The first four limb vertebrates, ayan, nag-evolve nag na ang ano, buhay from the simple microorganisms, nagkaroon ng simple plants and animals. Yung mga simple animals ay nagkaroon ng, ano, ng particular uh, evolution, nagkaroon na ng mga limbs, pangapaa, and the origin of the land plants. Ayan, another era is the Mesozoic era. Ang mga periods niya ay ang Triassic, naririnig nyo to sa mga movies, Jurassic, ayan, and Cretaceous. Kasi ito yung time ng mga uh, earlier dinosaurs at saka yung mga common na dinosaurs na nakita natin sa mga museums or sa mga pelikula, yung Jurassic Park, di ba? Mesozoic is... Uh, Mesozoic means middle life. So nasa gitna siya, di ba? Pangalawa siya. Represents the age of the dinosaurs. And it also marks the appearance of the first or the earliest forms of mammals at saka mga plants. So from simple plants, ayan, nagkaroon na mga flowers, tumaas na rin yung mga ibang plants, nag-evolve din sila through time. Finally, we have the Cenozoic Era. So we have the dalawang period, the tertiary at saka the quaternary. And as you can see, nandiyan na tayo mga tao. Sa epoch, ayan, so the, the quaternary uh, period, as you can see, is divided into different epochs pa. And if you will notice, yung mga tao ay, tayo ay nag-rise or nag-emerge during the Holocene epoch. Tandaan na. So Cenozoic means 
new life naman. So, panibagong ano na, set ng mga organisms, mga mas advanced na na organisms. Hindi lang animals class ha, kasi usually ang iniisip ng mga studyante, laging pag-evolution, plant, uh, animals lang. Nag-evolve din yung mga microorganisms and of course, the plants. Kung baga, sumabay sila sa daloy ng ano, kung baga, the need for for them to evolve para mag-survive. Ayan, and as promised, here are the different links, very useful links. Lagi ko pinopromote, isa sa mga favorite kong website, ayan, geology.com. Access nyo lang yan. We also have uh, www.digitalatlasofancientlife.org. Napakagandang website kasi um, while I'm reading it kanina, uh, may mga ano siya, mas detailed na explanation siya kay example. So uh, you, you better check that out. And then finally, yung latest na pinaka-up-to-date daw na version ng uh, geologic time scale provided by the Geological Society of America can be found on the link, itong link na to na nasa ibaba. Ayan. Okay, let's try to answer this uh, 10-item activity found on module 13, page 12. Ayan. Sige nga, habang pina-flash ko lang yan, counting shout-out lang tayo na mabilis. Okay, so si Sam Place, okay ka lang ba, Nak? So I hope, ano, positive lang tayo sa buhay, Nak, ha? <laughs> Hello, Russell Adam. Ayan, Patubig Elementary School, anabati ko na yan kanina. We also have viewers from SDO Llanera Annex. Good afternoon po. SDO Batangas, Miss Jenny Falarcuna. Good afternoon po. Maria Cecilia Bajo, ma'am. Good afternoon. Mar Maria Cristina Jocelyn Briguelis. Watching from Bagong Silangan Elementary School. Ayan. So marami tayong Bagong Silangan. Saan po kaya yan, ma'am? Mention nyo po. Let's have number one. It is where all traces of history of Earth is recorded in rocks that make up the cross. Answer is the geologic record. By the way, uh, if you want the copy of this uh, presentation, you can check the DepEd Commons website. So, in-upload po natin lahat ng mga itulay PowerPoint presentations natin doon para at least mabalikan niyo yung mga lessons. Pwedeng magamit yan ng teachers or ng parents, di ba? So, ano na yan? Sharing, hashtag sharing is caring. So, you can check that out or you can check the replay sa YouTube at saka sa Facebook. Number two, it is a way on how the age of rocks and fossils can be determined and when, <laughs> na flash ko yung sagot, sorry, <laughs> by its numeric value. The answer is, ayan, numeric nga, so specific, absolute dating. Number three, it is the largest division in the geologic time scale. Largest divisions among the choices, very obvious. Number three is, eon or the eons. Number four, it refers to the rocks that are deposited and use in dating method. Ano klase ng rock? So among the choices, isa lang naman dyan yung type ng rock. So we have number four, sedimentary rock. Number five, it is used to determine the geological events in the rock strata or the rock layers. So layers ang basihan. So kanina, absolute dating, the opposite would be number five, relative dating. All right, tahimik ng comment section na. <laughs> Number six, it refers to the prominent reptiles. Ayan, anong reptile yan that evolved during the Mesozoic era? Yung gusto-gusto natin nakikita sa mga movies. Pero kapag in real life, good luck sa atin. <laughs> the answer would be dinosaurs. Seven, the fitting of the supercontinent Pangea happened in this era. So, bibigay ko to as bonus. Uh, it happened during the Paleozoic era. Number eight, the present human evolved during this age. I've mentioned that earlier. Anong epoch yan? Nag-evolve uh, ang mga tao from the primates. So we have the Holocene epoch. And number nine, it refers to the age of the fishes. Saan kaya nag-evolve uh, or nag-emerge yung mga fish natin? So, ang fish kasi ang mga unang forms ng vertebrate animals. So, from, vertebr uh, from fish, nagkaroon ng amphibians, ng reptiles. Tapos, yung ibang reptiles naging birds at saka naging mammals. And it happened during the Devonian period. And finally, number 10, ayan, ancient bacteria. O, oh, kanina, nakita sa screen. Asian bacteria and blue-green algae existed during this age. It happened during the Archean Iyon. Okay. You can use this. Pwede nyo yung screenshot to para at least may guide kayo sa answering the 
the module. Ah, from Quezon City pala si Ma'am Maria Cristina. Ka-division ko pala si Ma'am. Hello po. Ayan. And we are now on our last target. So yun, very good tayo na maximize natin ng time. So as you can see in our presentation, no, so we'll be focusing on the hazards na binibigay na or dinudulot ng earthquakes at saka ng volcanic eruption since the Philippines is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. That's why we are experiencing this kind of natural uh, uh, processes or geologic processes. Ayan, may sumagot. Jake Donley C. Padua, you are correct. Arkeyan, thank you for answering. So ano ba yung sinasabi natin geologic processes na mention natin to during the previous uh, sessions natin? These are the naturally occurring events. Siyempre, nangyayari yan directly or indirectly sa, sa, sa surface ng Earth, Im impacting the geology of the planet. Examples includes, ayan, plate tectonics, ayan, weathering, discuss na natin yan, uh, mountain formation, deposition, erosion. It also includes uh, droughts, ayan, so part pa rin yan ng ano, geologic uh, events, yung pagkatuyo. Or minsan naman, nag-overflow, flooding, and different forms of landslides. So, these geological processes are affect every human on Earth of all, the, uh, all the time. Kaya nga, may, may term tayo or yung mga experts, we, they, they are using the term natural disaster. Kasi it threatens the, the, the life of humans. At saka yung, yung, uh, yung structure ng ating uh, Earth. Especially the environment. Natural disasters. Okay. A geologic hazard is an extreme natural event in the cross of the earth. Okay. We all know that. So it is a threat to the different life. At saka tayo sa mga, sa mga tao, uh, it also threatens, of course, yung mga in-invest natin na mga properties. That's why very important that we come prepared, di ba? Lagi yung ina-advocate ng ating mga government officials. So they are unpredictable. They are unpredictable in nature of, uh, and they, ang challenge kasi is, tulad ng earthquake, di ba, unpredictable siya. So, challenge sa mga experts natin, although we are using mga devices na, so hindi pa may, may limitation pa rin tayong mga tao in identifying, evaluating, and mitigating against them, against the these natural uh, hazards. Okay. Alright, sige, may activity pala tayo. So, Arrange Me. This is found on Module 15, pages 5 to 6. Okay. So, all you have to do is identify what is shown in the picture. Ayan. Medyo ano lang siya. So, I got this from the module. So, medyo ano lang siya. Grayscale lang. So, the letters, the unscrambled letters will serve as your clue. Ano kaya yung first picture na yan? Uh, hello, Fernando Ponseca, watching from Esperanza. San kaya yung Esperanza? Sa Pampanga ba yan or what? So the first picture is, yan, ground shaking. So mamaya, manalaman natin what is ground shaking. Second picture, ayan, mga harbor waves, Japanese word yan, yung mga malalaking waves natin, starts with letter T. Sige nga, comment naman tayo sa ating comment section ng ating uh, stream. So that's what we call the... Flash ko na. <laughs> tsunami or tsunami, tsunami. Actually, it's pronounced as tsunami. as a Japanese word. Next picture. Ito hindi to flood, ah. <laughs> Mukha lang flood sa picture dun sa module. Pero ito ay actually luma ano Ang nangyayari dyan is the soil liquefies or lumalambot yung lupa during the ground shaking or kapag may mga particular intensities or magnitude ng earthquakes. It starts with letter L. Ang clue nyo dyan is liquefy. Ayan. Okay, so nagkakaroon po tayo ng net. Ayan, nawawalan daw ng net. Okay ba yung stream natin? Ayan, John Rydell Madriaga Galupo, tsunami, you're correct. Okay naman ako. I think let's, need, let's flash the answer now. We have liquefaction, so lumalambot ng lupa. And finally, ayan, so we are experiencing this in the Philippines, sa mga mountainous areas natin. It's defined as the movement of a mass of rock, debris, or... Earth down a slope. Starts with L. The answer is landslides. Okay, so we'll know more about those four hazards later on. Ayan. So ang highlight kasi ng ano natin, as I have mentioned, is about earthquake and volcanic eruptions. So ang earthquake naman talaga is very, ano, 
threatening at saka nakakatakot, 'di ba? Once we we felt the ano, the movement of the plates, 'di ba? And ang earthquake kasi, man, if you will ano, remember, meron tayong dalawang kinds na kinds na earthquake. So pwede siyang tectonic, ibig sabihin sa paggalaw ng lupa or pwede siyang cause ng isang volcanic eruption or yung mga volcanic earthquakes natin. Kumbaga, aftermath ng pagputok ng volcanoes. Ayan, so different earthquake hazards here in the Philippines. Ayan, last 2019, ayan, yung mga uh, kababayan natin sa Mindanao. So medyo mat malakas to, magnitude 6.9 sa first picture. And then itong second picture on the right, we have here the a picture of a house or mga houses na, not, na affected by the uh, when nag erupt yung Taal Volcano during uh, ano, January 2020, earlier part ng 2020. Isa sa mga unang pagsubok ng 2020, if you would remember. Ayan. So, different earthquake hazards. We have five. So, let's begin with ground shaking. Ayan. Surface faulting, landslide, liquefaction, mga na-mention natin sa activity kanina, at saka tsunami. Okay? So, I'll be providing the description as well as uh, example photo. Ayan. So, first is ground shaking. So, pagyanig ng lupa. It's both a hazard created by earthquakes and the trigger. So, connected din siya sa liquefaction at saka sa landslides. Kasi nga, may nagkakaroon ng ano, instability or naging unstable yung lupa lumalambot. So, that's ground shaking. When we say surface faulting naman, so surface ng earth, Fault is bitak or fracture sa surface. It is defined as a displacement that reaches the Earth's surface during slip along a fault. So it's commonly uh, it commonly occurs or happens during uh, shallow earthquakes kung saan ang epicenter ay less than 20 kilometers lang. So nakakaroon ng mga ganyan. Ang tawag ay surface faulting. The third one is about landslides. So very prominent or mga nang up till now, 'di ba, nangyayari to sa ano sa mga mountainous parts ng Philippines, sa Luzon, sa Visayas, saka sa Mindanao. Ayan. So may mga videos tayo sa Facebook, 'di ba, mga nagwa-viral, uh, na feature din sa mga magazine shows natin ng television, uh, na kukuha nan talaga kung paano makita natin kung paano nagfo-flow yung yung soil, 'di ba? Minsan after or usually after uh, a strong typhoon. Kasi nga, lumalambot yung lupa. And ang additional pa doon, or yung pinang pri primary reason would be the, ayan, as you can see, yung portion na kung saan nagkaroon ng landslide ay yung mga portion na, ano na, na naputulan na ng mga uh, puno. ba diba? Next one is liquefaction. As you can see, ayan, it describes the way in which soil liquefies during ground shaking. So ang soil kasi naman is actually... Uh, dapat ano it was created ano eh stable siya dapat di ba hino hold kasi siya ng mga roots ng plants eh pero for some instances or for some reasons lumalambot siya let's say for example kapag nabasa siya or na expose siya ng matagal sa presence ng water kung baka may water element lumalambot na siya pero this time liquefaction uh, it is uh, an aftermath or it's a cause of earthquakes so pag yanig ng lupa ang nagkaroon ng dis disturbance That could be a factor para magkaroon ng liquefaction. Okay? And finally, we have tsunami or tsunamis, the, the giant waves na nakakatakot. As we can see on viral videos at saka sa mga movies, di ba, dinedepict yung mga tsunamis na yan. Ang tsunami ay caused by earthquakes or volcanic eruptions under the sea. And of course, it destroys uh, properties and it can claim or kill different uh, many lives. You know, nakaka, nakakalungkot dyan. Although may mga tsunami warnings naman tayo na pinapalabas pero although may mga times na it was sudden talaga na ano na tsunami because of a very strong earthquake under the the sea. Next part or last part natin would be the vol volcanic eruption hazards. So ano kaya yung mga hazards na brought about by volcanic eruptions? Okay. So let's begin with, are you familiar with the term uh, tephra? Ayan, tephra. So tephra is a scientific term that refers to the pyroclastic fragments. Isa yun sa mga tumatalsik, sa, ano, in-eject ng volcano during a very explosive kapag sobrang galit na ano, may mga magnitude din kasi yung ano, pag-erupt, di ba? May mga manali, mahihina or manalakas na pag-erupt. So that's what we call the tephra. Related din sa tephra is the second hazard, ang tawag ay pyroclastic flow. So dumadaloy na siya along with the lava. 
uh, pieces of lava, uh, solidified lava, may kasamang volcanic ash. Siyempre, yung volcanic ash na yan, medyo delikado yan sa health natin kasi it contains uh, certain amounts of sulfur and other uh, elements na kapag na-inhale na, na, na natin, uh, can cause uh, disturbance sa ating respiratory system. And it also includes hot gases. Ayan na, tephra, tephra and pyroclastic flow. We also have, ayan, sa Pilipinas, lahar at saka flood. So, lahar is associated with volcanic eruption. So, it is defined as a hot or cold mixture of water and rock fragments that flows down the slope. So, bakit hazard ang lahar? Kasi uh, nakaka-destroy siya ng mga different properties or kapag hindi nakapag-evacuate ka agad yung mga tao, syempre, it can also kill or it can also be a reason para magkaroon ng mga ano, uh, Uh, kamatayan sa mga uh, area na apektado yung lahar na yon. So, lahar and flood is the third volcanic eruption hazard. The fourth one is what we call lava domes. Ayan. So, I think hindi siya ganun ka, ano, ka prominent sa ano. I haven't uh, read any uh, news pa sa about lava domes. But it is defined as a viscous magma being erupted effusively into the surface and then piling up around the vent. So, pwede siyang, ang vent kasi is yung mga butas na pwede pang daanan ng lava, ng magma, tapos pwede maging lava siya, di ba? So, kapag pinapayal niya kasi yun, so pwede, pwede ano, magkaroon ng pressure. So, instead na smooth lang yung pag-flow, may added pressure pa. So, yun yun ang isa sa mga reason kung bakit siya nagiging ano, hazard or delikado. So, lava domes. And then finally, ayan. So, poisonous gases, di ba? Nung January 2020, nauso yung ano, para nagkaubusan ng, if you remember, nagkaubusan ng uh, face mask doon nag-start, di ba? Wala pang ano nun eh, wala pang COVID-19 pandemic, January 2020, nagkaroon ng parang, nag, ano, nagkaroon ng surge sa pagbili ng mga mask. Kasi nga, hanggang dito sa Metro Manila and other parts of Luzon, abot yung, ano, yung, yung ashes, mga poisonous gas na dala ng, eto, papakita ko na yung picture. It happened January 12, 2020. We are, ano, Uh, threatened by this kasi kaka-celebrate lang natin, di ba? New Year to, eh. happy happy pa tayo nito. But then we are saddened by the news, by the uh, by the news of uh, er the eruption of the Taal volcano. So, kumbaga naging major ano to, major threat sa mga Pilipino, isa sa mga unang pagsubok natin during the year 2020. And ito isa pa to sa ano, nagtrending din sa Facebook, di ba? If you would remember, sobrang nakakatakot yung ano nakita nila or na na witness ng mga uh, malapit sa Batangas na lightning. So parang they are telling na oh, end of the world na ba ganyan ganyan. Well actually, we all we also have to remember that this is just a part. Kumbaga, part ito ng uh, proseso ng ano sa planet Earth, sa cycle ng Earth. So we just have to be uh, we just have to be prepared. Kaya nga pinag-aaralan natin tong mga concepts na ito. Ayun. So those are the earthquake and volcanic hazards. Volcanic eruption hazards. Let's try to answer three questions right now. Number one, what is the main reason why the Philippines has suffered from numerous geologic processes and calamities? Economic status, our location ba? Philippines is a third world country, ganun ba yon? Or something to do with human population? Of course, number one is letter B. We are located on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Number two, Which of the following hazards undermine the foundations and supports of buildings? Kung baga, lumalambot yung pinaka-foundation, bridges, pipelines, and roads, causing them to sink into the ground, collapse, or dissolve. Eutrophication, ground shaking, liquefaction, or pyroclastic flow. So lumalambot ng lupa, we term that as liquefaction. And then finally, the third uh, question, a natural physical process becomes a natural hazard when the process becomes A, scary, B, dormant and inactive. C, faster than usual. Or letter D, extreme and unpredictable. If you would analyze the, the, the question, the best answer would be, of course, letter D. Naging natural hazard siya kasi, kasi naging extreme at saka unpredictable yung mga, ano niya, mga hazards or yung effects niya sa atin. Okay? Ayan, and our session would not be complete without our segment called Be Inspired and Be Blessed. And I quote from William Wordsworth, ang sabi niya, Life is divided into three terms, that which was, which is, and which will be. Let us learn from the past to profit by the present, and from the present 
to live better in the future. So we learn from the past. Hashtag moving on nga dapat, di ba? Dapat hindi natin kinukulong ang sarili natin sa, sa nakaraan. So we have to be motivated, encouraged by the, the current ano, ano, situation natin. So let's see the beauty ng, uh, at saka positivity ng current situation natin. Ayan, so thank you for watching our week 6 session for Earth and Life Science. This has been Sir Tony. You can message me e uh, via email, Facebook, or via YouTube. I hope you learned something. See you next week. Uh, please stand by for Tutor Cat for Senior High School Media and Information Literacy. Bye. God bless. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Itulay Free Online Tutorial Session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam! in